which one would you rather live with? The regret of it not working or the regret of never trying? Going out in the future and thinking about all the negative shit of you not taking action is a great exercise because that should get you way out of bed and taking action. I have a very special guy on today's No Cap SMA podcast, Matt Shields. I saw Matt on Thomas Gannett's YouTube channel. Nothing bad on all the other guys on there, but when I saw Matt's presentation on his channel, immediately I was like, real recognized, real. This guy's running a legit agency. Matt, say what's up. Say basically yeah. your agency, where you're from, all that good stuff. What's up, guys? And Stevie, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. But yeah. Guys, my name's Matt. I'm a 21-year-old entrepreneur from North Carolina, as Stevie mentioned. I've been doing SMMA since I was 17. So my story is a little bit weird, but I dropped out of high school after ninth grade. I just left. That same year, my mom got fired from corporate America. So I left high school. My mom left corporate America. She was raising me as a single mom. So she was very stressed out. She decided to become a real estate agent, which led me into the world of real estate, which is now the niche that we serve. And I decided to try to help her with her marketing and with her logos and with her website. And it just ingrained me in this world of like design and entrepreneurship and building a business. Then when I was 17, I started doing classes online to finish my my high school. And I finished my senior year in three days. For anybody in high school right now who's like watching this and like, man, how can I get started faster? Fucking drop out of school. <laughs> Get into an online program, finish your online program in like two days, buy a course and just go all out. And that's exactly what I did. I dropped out of ninth grade. Then I did online. I finished in three days my senior year. I was 17 years old. I bought a $600 course, Billy Wilson's course. Shout out to Billy. Then I just went all out, man. And I started working 60, 70 hours a week as a 17 year old. I was obsessed because I had so much trauma in my adolescence. Like I had so much anxiety. I had so much depression. I had so much fear. I had so much hopelessness as a kid. And then I find this course, I find this like YouTube content around SMMA. I'm like, maybe there's something I can do here. You know, maybe there's something I can do here, but I had no self-esteem. I had no confidence. I had no belief. And I bought this course. I started working my ass off. I built the competency to support the confidence and I made something and I went all out. I built a 20K a month agency in the gym niche at um, 17 years old with a partner. I ended up not being able to make that partnership work. We didn't come to good terms. Um, as far as like just the structure of the partnership. So I had to leave. And then I built another agency. We went from zero to 20K a month in 45 days. I did that one all by myself. Zero to 20K a month profit, um, I should say. And I was 18. Then COVID happened. And then I started a white label agency. We scaled that like zero to 30K a month in six months. That was cool. But then one of the clients I was white labeling for was a real estate guy. And he was like, dude, I don't know how to run Facebook ads, but I'm getting realtors who want to buy them. So like, help me out here. So I started white labeling for him. And this guy didn't really know what he was doing, but like he had so much growth compared to all the other agencies I was working with. I was like, man, there must be something about these realtors because this guy's getting clients every single week. And he he's just learning this. Like he doesn't even really know what he's doing. So I convinced him to partner. We partnered up and we ended up acquiring his agency, which is now Estate AI. Um, and we took that agency from basically zero to 300K a month in one year in the real estate niche. We've done it a little bit differently than most agencies. It's a very, very special company. I'm grateful to be a part of it. And yeah, man, that's that's my story. What's he called again? Estate AI. Estate AI. And you guys help real estate agents acquire more. What do you guys do exactly? Yeah. So we provide them leads and then we also teach them how to generate their own leads as well as convert leads and build businesses. Our mission is to shift the paradigm of the entire real estate industry because it's such an easy real it's such an easy industry to get into, similar to marketing, but it's a very hard industry to succeed in. So most people are misled from the moment they get their license in real estate. Our mission is to shift the entire paradigm through consulting, through lead generation, um, through community. And yeah, that's what we do. Love it. So basically you're helping real estate agents at the end of the day, make more money, right? That's why right? something I've immediately noticed off the bat is like me and Matt have very similar stories. It's almost identical. The only major difference is Matt is fucking 21 years old right now. Um, running a 300k a month agency at his level at 21 years old is absolutely insane. Huge, like shout out to you and your partner's young too, right? Thank you. Dude. Yeah, he's 21. He's younger than me. That's 
dude, for all you guys watching this, <laughs> you guys He's a beast too. 18, 19, 20, even if even if you're older, like this is like huge inspiration that like age is just like and we're gonna tap into this because obviously you've had to mature a lot earlier, right? Because at 21 for me, dude, I was a gym rat in the gym. All I cared about was lifting weights and I probably made 14 bucks an hour and I didn't know shit. I was like so stupid. So to see you at your age running a company your size with the employee count and all that is is super amazing. Um, so let's you, jump into it. like, how does someone do something? How does someone build a company your size at 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 twenty one? I know you just broke it down, but like, did you ever like think your age was something holding you back? from building a company or the size? I'm super glad you asked that because I think every younger person listening to this, whether they're 25 or they're 17, like we all deal with that age as a limiting belief to some extent. And I'm a big believer that age is literally just an idea. And it's literally just a, a construct. And like you you let your age define you only if you let it define you. For me, I think the biggest reason I've been able to level up in my age, maybe comparatively to the average 21 year old is because I stopped doing all the 21 year old shit. I stopped drinking. I stopped partying. I stopped going on social media. I, I just stopped doing all of that bullshit. And then I had to replace that time with something new. I found business and I just replaced the negative activities with the good activities. And I was very, very strict on that. We talked about character traits yesterday, man. Discipline, I think is the most important. Like, can you, can you control your impulses? And set yourself up for your long-term success. Like, can you control the shit that is tempting to do in the in the moment and set yourself up for the long-term marathon? Um, the man who wins is the man who gives up the short-term pleasures during the sprint, the sprint to create the long-term purpose in the marathon. And I just got really good at doing that at a young age. Um, and it's been a fucking journey, man. Like I remember the first cold call I made, I was shaking, I was sweating, I probably smelled like shit. I was like, man, like I'm about to call this dentist and see if they want my marketing. I was 17. I had no idea what I was doing. I was so terrified and I just did it anyway because I had to. And I think so much of this journey has just come down to doing things, even though I hated the idea of doing it, but because I had to, like there was no other option. And that's what forced my success. Most people are like trying to maybe become successful it needs to become a necessity. It needs to become like it is required. There is no other way because that's the only thing that's going to push you to actually do the thing that you need to do to level up and become the person that you're capable of becoming. What was like the number one reason why you needed to make it work? Like what was the motivator? Hmm. Honestly, dude, I thought I was going to take my own life if I didn't figure out how to make money because the reason I dropped out of school was a lot of dark shit. After I dropped out, like I didn't, I didn't like waking up for basically three years straight. I was like from age 14 to age 17, I was like, it wouldn't be the worst thing if I didn't wake up tomorrow. And that was like, that was my mindset for three years. So I wasn't going to go to college. I would have rather died than go to college. I wasn't going to work a nine to five. I would have rather died genuinely. And that's, that's not good. I didn't wish I felt like that, but it's just how I was. What was your last job? W2 job. Oh, I, I've never worked one ever. <laughs> You've never had a job? No, no, I've never had a job. I, I did. So one day. I, I did the scorekeeping at Carolina Courts for a basketball game. I made like 30 bucks. Um, so I, I don't know if you can count that. What was the big contributor of pain then? Like what what was, where did all the pain come from that fueled your ability to get your hands extremely dirty and, and build something from the ground up? It was a lot of anxiety. I had, I had a lot of anxiety as a kid. I think it's because I had a certain idea of what I wanted to be, who I wanted to be as a person. But every single day I acted in a different way. And so I started to ruin my relationship with myself because my actions on a daily basis didn't match with the idea of who I wanted to be. So I just started to build a very negative relationship with myself. And I started not to trust myself and my self-esteem took a hit as a result. And then I, I got pushed into business. So dude, there's a lot of trauma. I was talking with my friend yesterday about this and we're like, trauma sucks in the moment, obviously, but damn, is it a good indicator for you being able to achieve something amazing because trauma pushes you to a level that a normal adolescence cannot like it just you once you get to that 10 million mark the only thing that's going to keep you going after that is some deep rooted fucking trauma that's just like i gotta do this for something that i can't even explain because there's just something 
evil inside of me that like I gotta get yeah. out. It's not good, but I don't know if you can relate to that or if you, you no, feel that at no, all. Like this, end, but so main takeaways right now are like our st- our stories are so similar in terms of like you dropped out of school ninth grade. I basically graduated high school with a 1.9. The principal got me through because I played Damn. sports, but I yeah so so bad at school so just not that smart intelligent what we thought was book smart so i always thought you know i grew up on a skateboard i grew Mm. up traveling around buses skating doing you know doing all everything that you Mm. see in lords of dogtown that's how my (laughs) that's basically how my high school was and trauma started to set in once I realized the only way I could actually be free was to be able to make enough money and to be self-sufficient as a, a business owner or else yeah. I would have to continue waking up at 6 a.m. and work in, in the juice bars and the restaurants. And yeah. that trauma over about a year and a half period, which is not like severe, it's, it's trauma in a way of like, like waterboarding me to where I'm showing up to this place and every day I'm like so miserable and every day friends walk in from the gym or this and that, I'm just embarrassed. And it's just growing and growing and growing. And it's yeah. becoming to the point where my fuse is really short. Like it's super short to where like I could almost mm. flinch and punch someone in the face or throw a smoothie at someone's face. It almost got to that point. And yeah. that was the moment I realized like there's no way I can see myself doing this for that much longer and um, mm. I honestly think um, I'm so fortunate that my that my parents weren't super strict and allowed me to have a very freedom filled childhood because I understood like what it felt like to like express myself and be mm. out, out and then once I got locked into that severe nine to five type reality doing shit that like robots can do making smoothies and food and shit and just duh, duh, doing the same shit it was like a very traumatic dark sort of moved part part of the story for me and uh i think what happens is me and you've gone through some traumatic shit yeah. and people who never experienced the traumatic stuff and just stay in the middle they end up staying there because they don't have that like big eye opener dramatic like pain painful experience it never gets bad enough you yeah know? It, it never it never gets bad, bad enough. enough to give them a reason to want to go do something great um that's why like any anytime somebody that I talked to is like, man, I'm going through a lot of shit right now. Like I'm really upset. I'm, I'm like, ah, it's, it's tough in my life right now. I'm like, good, good. Barbara Corcoran says this um, from, from Shark Tank and obviously from a lot of other companies. She's like, the more shit that somebody has gone through, like the better the entrepreneur. When they tell me they got beat as a child, when they tell me that they hated the life, when they tell me they did draw, like good, good. Cause that's going to make them do something that that's going to make them sacrifice to a level that others won't. And I think sacrifice is the key to success. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, Stevie. Like the people who gain the most are the people who give up the most. But you won't give up the comfort unless it becomes so bad that you have to. And for me, it just got so bad that I was like, I have to give up all the bullshit and I have to make this work. Wasn't I? It wasn't I want to. It was I need to. Uh, and you don't get what you want in life. You get what you need. So it became a need for me and that pushed me. 100%. Like I think realizing that to take a business off the ground, you actually need to learn how to work and focus. Just even learning how to focus and work is like a huge learning experience within itself because you realize that your phone is like your worst enemy and all these apps and all this shit going on and like wondering what people are doing. It's your worst enemy. And so some of the biggest sacrifices that a lot of people won't make that are so simple is just simply isolating yourself for a year, two years, getting yeah. off IG, getting off all the shit and just going so deep into just learning how to actually sit down and work on something mm. without things just coming in and interrupting you. And I think that was like one of the first skill sets that I had to learn was exactly that of like resisting yeah resisting resisting no i'm not going out no instagram just staying in and that's a lot of sacrifice for at my age 24 where everyone's you know out in pacific beach san diego at the beach drinking doing all this cool shit and i'm over here like if i don't figure this out i'm gonna go back to literally working the restaurants and then that that is not an option for me and that's just not going down. So I just, yeah, man, I think time horizon is a really important thing to keep in mind with habit building. 
And I think most people think in too short of a time frame. Like, hey, if I drink today, I'll feel bad tomorrow, but then like I'll be good next week. But what if you don't stop drinking for the next year? What if you don't stop the negative habits for the next year? What about the next decade? What do you what does your life look like 10 years from now if you don't stop doing the thing now? And on the flip side, what if you cut everybody off? What if you focused on a business? What if you focused on developing yourself, not just for the next month, but for the next five years? Where does your life look like five years from now? So if you can think in a longer term horizon and a longer time frame, not only does it make you want to cut out the negative shit, but it makes you want to push forward and do the positive shit because you're realizing like eventually it's just going to be inevitable that I'm either going to be screwed because I kept doing the bullshit or that I'm going to succeed because I turned my life around and I didn't stop. Like if you gave it up for five years straight, where do you think you would be? And if, if you can imagine yourself five years from now, you're going to be winning because it's five years straight. How could you lose? But most of us, we only think on like five weeks or five days, right? So if you can extend the time horizon, it helps a lot. Well, that's a very mature way of thinking that uh, is, you know, not typical for for someone your age because we're so used to immediate gratification thinking long term and thinking of like if i do this for two years then i'll gain the benefit or get where i want right is so hard for people because at the end of the day what i used to think what happens if i do all this work i send these thousand emails i shoot these hundred videos i do all this what happens if i do all of it and say no to all the parties and everything and then it doesn't work and this is like a lot of work a lot of strain on on everything you know and it just doesn't work and if you're gonna make it in entrepreneurship and business and agency you have to destroy that stupid little voice yep. right there because there's a guaranteed way it's not gonna work it's you Dude, going along with that motive and just never getting started just staying exactly where you're at and and there you go. So you got two. Yeah, do one of my favorite questions to ask, not just myself. I do this. I used to do this on sales calls a lot. Um, one of my favorite like closing lines is, could you live with that? And so I think about it when you just said that, I thought about that as well. Like if it didn't work, could you live with that? Right. But if you didn't try ever, could you live with that? Which one would you rather live with? The regret of it not working or the regret of never trying? Because if, and you said you re-ask yourself this, right? Because that's a big motivator motivator within itself is if you yeah visualize and feel yourself 20 years from now looking back at yourself now yeah. and saying you fucking idiot you should have just did it why didn't you do it because now you're 20 years older and your reality and environment is probably pretty weak which is why you're even having that conversation to begin with you know a lot a lot of this stuff you know, a lot of this woo woo wah wah stuff, like I don't talk about it a lot, but some of it is legit. Like going out in the future and thinking about all the negative shit of you not taking action is a great exercise because that should get you way out of bed and taking action. The woo woo stuff is the game because your oh, yeah. business is just a reflection of yourself. So like it is you, it is right. how you think, it is how you operate. Your, your reality is just a reflection of your thoughts. So if you don't change your thoughts, you won't change your reality. It doesn't matter what tactics you have. You have to become the person who can use the tactics. Even right now, Stevie Johnson, right now, in my position right now, I'm still coming back to the woo-woo shit because no matter where we're at, I'm at my stage and my goal still up here. And the goal is still like, I don't know how I'm going to get there. So one thing I need to do is have extremely powerful, good thoughts on the fact that that reality is going to happen. That's Dude, absolutely expected. Yes. I get in yes. that sort of mind frame on my walks. And then I realize, man, all this shit is expected. And then that type of energy, those thoughts become the feelings that now I feel of like, nah, I am this guy. I am this dude. Mm -hmm. you gotta do this. And then that creates powerful actions. 100%. Actions of taking bigger risk, thinking more things. And the weirdest thing ever is whenever I'm like super disciplined on Simply going on a walk or if I'm not even on the walk, just simply when I have the 10 minutes just to review like what my goals are financially, personally, what my life looks like. And I just take a second and just think about all of it. Life just seems to be a lot more like, I don't know, things just like kind of happen all in the place. a lot, a lot better. Dude, the first thing is something that I saw Hermosi say once that has always stuck with me. This guy asked Alex, like, what is the dialogue with yourself like like what are you saying to yourself in your mind on a daily basis when you're just quiet and what alex said is most of my inner talk 
It's just me trying to convince myself that I'm capable of the things that I'm setting out to do. Like most of it is just me trying to actually convince myself that I can do it, that it like I am capable of becoming the richest man in the world or whatever the goal is. That kind of leads to what you were saying, like those thoughts create the actions. I say this quote all the time. It's my favorite quote by far. It's by a guy named Lao Tzu. And he says, be careful with your thoughts because your thoughts determine your words. Your words determine your actions. Your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your character and your character determines your destiny. So if you peel all of that back, your thoughts determine your destiny. Like the thoughts are the thing that create your life. So um, yeah, man, thoughts, woo woo shit. It is oh, the destiny that we are on. It all starts with a thought. Um, 100%. You need to train yourself to have a better perspective on, on your everything. Changes, right? Like there's, there's two ways to look at it. Like we all have goals. One way I can look at it, which I can be caught in this sort of mind frame is like, I wake up and I feel like I'm legit pushing a boulder up a hill and the cortisol's up and everything's up. And it just feels like yeah. boulders up the hill. That's not like the best place to be in. You can still be making all this money, but like legit when it feels like you're in this long marathon cardio race with a vest on, going yeah. uphill it can be draining and so i like to step back and just bring up the p word which is perspective because perspective mm. is powerful and just realize how like mm. lucky am i to go from making fucking smoothies to now figuring out how to build a super profitable eight-figure agency with a bunch of dope ass people team members shout out to all you guys i, I forget that i was i was you know unlocking all the chairs and going, right. going into the shoe shop and taking everyone's shit and smopping i forget right. all this. i have to like realize like yo, because you adapt that. to your reality like you just said to me earlier you adapt to your reality so it's so easy to forget where you started i forget so often how bad my life used to be but anytime i just go back to that place i'm just like man how can i ever fucking complain about anything i literally didn't think i would be alive right now like how can i how could i be upset about anything this is where i get i don't know maybe a little bit hippie i don't know but i look up into the sky sometimes especially at night i'll look up into the sky and i'll just look at the moon i'll look at stars and i'll just be like what the fuck like dude there's this doesn't matter at all none of this matters at all this is all just made up like none of this actually matters so that p word that you said perspective it's everything man like let's go into some bit business strategy you got to 300k a month in 18 months is that right so we went from we went from 10k a month to 300k a month in a year 10k a month to 300k a month in a year we acquired the agency and then one year later after we acquired it, it was it was yeah 292 a month jesus christ so in terms of like that fast to scale i guess what what kind of challenges did you have to overcome to scale that quick because that's like kind of yeah crazy fast first thing was management and leadership and like now we have to delegate and no longer be the executors or the executors we have to be the executives and that was the biggest shift it's like now i have to learn how to get other people to do the thing and i don't get to do it anymore like that that was the hardest part then it was just client success how do we make sure we're not just churning and burning how do we make sure we can actually sustain this scale and that's always the hardest part when you and i were talking yesterday what i think is so cool about digital ox is you guys have an amazing freaking product. And that's why it's not if, it's when you're going to get to eight figures because you have an amazing product. That makes everything better. That makes the team culture better. That makes the management easier. That makes leadership easier. Everything gets better when you sell a good shit that people actually want. Like So those were the two things, management, leadership. A thousand percent. Right. A yeah. thousand percent. So basically I like to call it in other words, product market fit or service market fit. Sure. Like at the end of the day, you know, you know if your product's good or not. And you do press your head down and you go yeah. to bed. you understand like where you stand in the market, how superior your product is because of your churn, the client feedback, the type of emails you're getting, your reviews. And you're exactly right. It all starts with building an amazing product and service. 100%. And once you get that right, building the team and the culture and everything else becomes so much more enjoyable because yep. putting a shit product and trying to build a team to build a shit product. And then what that does in the, to the culture, especially oh, when you guys are faking like this 
amazing type of product when deep down inside your employees aren't <laughs> eating, they know that customers don't like the product they know that turns mm. out all this stuff it just eats it eats everyone alive and uh, that's some real shit S- scientific studies show that in order to have statistical significance you need at least 36 sets of data so until you have at least 36 active clients you have not gotten enough clients to focus on product. You have to earn the ability to focus on product because the best thing you can do in the beginning to make your product better is to get more data because when you only have five clients, you can't build a great product. You yeah. don't have enough data to test. So you have to sacrifice six to 12 months, maybe even a year of not the best client results in order to get all of the clients to then at that point, you have enough uh you have enough data, you have enough sets to just run split tests, to trial different things, to do different follow-up sequences, to talk to your customers and see, hey, what's working for you? What's working for you? What's working for you? And that way you can actually build the best product and scale it out to more people. Yeah. So I 100% agree, especially if this is your first company, your first agency, you have to do this because yeah, if I didn't say like, Literally, that's where, where I come from. I came from the most basic lead gen Facebook ad agency. And over the year, year and a half of delivering the most basic service because I only knew so much and I can only execute the most basic, we got the feet wet and we started to understand how things work. And then more importantly, through the pain of clients canceling, we started to identify the patterns of why they were canceling, what reasons. And as the pattern just kept becoming more obvious and obvious and obvious as an entrepreneur, which is basically a problem solver, you realize how can I fix this problem with better service, better product, which is through innovation. And so if you're brand new, you're going to have to start with the most basic stuff. You're just earning your stripes of just even learning how to even provide the most basic service as you go on you'll start to identify all the potholes and all the leaks in the bucket. And that is your opportunity to become a better entrepreneur, a better agency owner by not tolerating those issues and then using your skill sets and team to yep. fill, fill those holes up, which is building better service and solving problems better. In the beginning, Joel, Joel Kaplan taught me this. And it's always, um, it's always been in the back of my mind as we we're trying to scale. And he said, be most people try to be proactive instead of reactive. They try to get ahead of the problem, but you actually want to be reactive instead of proactive because most people are trying to solve a problem that is not even there. They're solving the wrong problem altogether. So be reactive and let the real problem come to you. You will know when it is the real problem, but most people are being overly proactive and they're solving a problem that's not even there yet. So be reactive instead of proactive in the beginning. Let's just say there's 10 new agency owners starting out right now, what would you tell them in terms of what's going to separate them from being mediocre average versus building an agency like yours? Just, you know, top, top 1%. I think in the beginning, the agency owner obviously is the most crucial part. Like you are the most important piece. The biggest reason I think agency owners fail or quit, I should say, because the only way to actually fail is to quit and give up on the game. I think the biggest reason that is, is because people have unrealistic expectations and they're trying to get it way too fast. And I know we talked about this, so I won't hammer it in again, but like if you can just extend your time horizon by like five X multiple of what it is right now, you actually give yourself enough time to be in the game to build something great. This is my fifth agency or my sixth agency. So yeah, we scaled it in a year, but I've been doing this for five years now almost. So that's the biggest thing. So many people get into this game. They have so much potential. They could do it but they want to do it in six months, not six years. And that's where they just, they lose, they quit, they give up, they're done. But to actually get tactical, uh, I think client expectations and teaching business is actually one of the most unique ways you can build a great product. Because like everybody's trying to do SaaS and all this shit. And like, I don't like SaaS. I don't like, I don't like GHL resell ads SaaS because I think it's not real SaaS. Like that's not real. Real SaaS is you build your own software, you solve your own problem. But like reselling GHL, that's just affiliate marketing. It's not SaaS. What I think is the real problem and your goal as a business owner is like, how can I solve the number one problem that my clients face? It's not generating leads. Leads have been commoditized. 
anybody can generate leads. That's why SaaS doesn't solve a real problem. Leads are easy. The question is, how can you get your clients to succeed in business? That is what you're doing. And your leads are just a mechanism for their success. But on top of that, how else can you help them succeed? Because 90% of businesses fail, which means 90% of people have no idea what they're fucking doing every single day they wake up. What Estate AI does differently is we teach real estate agents how do you structure your day? How do you generate leads? How do you sell? How do you build a team? How do you do all of these things that most people just don't know how to do? So if you want to build a great product, you have to solve the biggest problem. And the biggest problem is lack of competency within the entrepreneur that you're working with, whether it's a med spa, whether it's a real estate agent, whether it's a gym owner. The reason gym launch got huge is not because gym launch knew how to get gym leads. They knew how to convert gym leads. They knew how to retain gym clients. They knew how to upsell. They knew how to cross sell. They knew how to grow a team and they taught their gym owners how to do that. That's why they became a 50 million a year agency. They solved the real problem, which is most gym owners have no idea how to run a gym, which is why most gyms fail. So you have to solve the real problem. And I personally think consulting and teaching is the best way to do that. And if you're like, well, damn, I don't know how to be a real estate agent. I don't know how to be a, a dentist. How am I going to teach somebody? I've never sold a home in my life. And we have a group of 250 realtors and we teach them every single day. We're about to be doing a call with them in 18 minutes. We're about to do a group call with them. I'm not going to be on the call. I'm going to be talking to Stevie. So you can find people who know what you don't know and you can start teaching them that way. And strategic partnerships become very, very valuable there. But that's the biggest golden nugget I can give. Solve the real problem, which is most business owners literally just have no idea what they're doing. It's innovating and providing the most value. If you're an agency owner and trying to understand how you can make things even more streamlined, more easy, more doable, more consistent for the client, you, you create ways to solve those problems for them. You are going to be in the top 1% and to yep. be in the top 1%, that's basically where you need to be. You need to be one of the top, top dogs especially if you're going in this game because you want to be rich and you want to have money you have to build a legit agency that solves legit problems with a legit team legit infrastructure there is no hey i'm just gonna like throw up some ads run it get a bunch of clients everyone's gonna respond to my cold emails yeah. and a year from now hey mom Look at me in the penthouse and, <laughs> and it's just linear from there. Like, no, like yeah. you, here, here's, here's, here it is. You're going to have to build a real company and it's going to yep. be really hard. And to get to that high, high level, which you see, you know, all the cars and all that stuff, you're going to have to, you're going to have to build your own, your own path. I mean, nothing's going to be like, Hey, step by step, this is how you do this, this, and this. You should be okay with that because now you realize why so many people quit and no, yeah. so many people don't get to that level. It's because you really do have to like, you have to build. 100%. That's why getting the most amount of clients is so important because the cool thing is now, if I want a masterclass on how do you serve clients as a real estate agent, or if I want a masterclass on how do you convert leads, whatever it is, I can go to our group of 250 realtors and I can say, who's a badass at this? And I can get them all on a call and I can ask them questions and I can take all of the information that they're giving me. And now I can reteach that to my group. So I don't need to know shit. I just need to know the people who know the stuff. You're just leveraging other people and you're literally just a middleman. Again, I don't know shit about real estate. I don't know how to sell a house. I don't know any, I don't even know how it works. But we're Absolutely. teaching 250 realtors. Hell yeah. And we're, we're teaching them well too. You learn the concept of um leverage. And and leverage. that's what I saw in his his video with Thomas Gannett is he understood that he could get some of the top real estate agents in the United States to do all the coaching for the agency. Yep. And so he's leveraging someone else's 30 years experience. Yes. Finding within a couple emails and probably a couple of Zoom calls, now there's now an arrangement for some of the most respected real estate agents in the market yep. to now represent estate AI and teach yep. everything from the top down, which is like extremely valuable. So 
that's being resourceful. That's understanding leverage. That's thinking outside the box. Like you don't, you don't need to know everything. You can find, nope. you can find people, you can pay people, you can create specific arrangements. And um, that was really, you know, inspiring to see, you know, especially like when I, when I realized, damn, you're also 21. You just need to kind of like know what you don't know and then find somebody else who knows it. But like you, yeah, like you said, Steve, you don't need to know everything. You just got to find the people who do. It sounds super simple. It really is. Like like finding good coaches has not been hard at all. There are so many coaches out there we could find to come in and teach our group. It's actually it's actually one of the easiest parts. It's just about knowing we needed them in the first place. And now if you're watching this video, the cool thing is like now you know. Once you get to 36 clients, start bringing in some coaches. Get your successful clients to do a call. Like this is one of the best things you can do. Have a weekly call that's just one of your successful clients answering questions from all the other clients on how they're succeeding with the system. Then everybody comes on this call and they're like, man, Sarah's winning with the system, but I'm not, but Sarah is. So the system works, but I don't. So like psychologically, it's no longer the leads or the agency. It's me because Sarah's literally here closing three deals a month. I know it works. So let me ask Sarah. And it just, it creates so much more credibility around your product, so much more legitimateness around legitimacy um, around your product. It, it just takes your brand, your product, your company to a new level uh, when you do the consulting model. That's why I'm such a big fan of it. Um, yeah, yeah. We could go in depth on consulting and hybrid all day, but that's uh, that's kind of the basis overview. And that's what I would recommend people start with. Get to 36 clients, start bringing on fire coaches, make your su most successful client a coach, and then just keep going. Keep innovating, baby. Hire the best yep. people you can. <laughs> Hire the best ones, man. Yeah. Hire the best one. Like get invest in the best coaches. Cause dude, now you're literally your company is literally somebody else, which is good though, because when you go to sell the company, the worst thing you can have is you be the face of the company. If you're the face of the back end, if you're the face of the front end, buyers are only going to want to buy the company if you're going to stay in it. So you need somebody else to be the face. So like the hybrid model is perfect for exiting the company too, because you're not involved ever. Like I was telling you yesterday, man, the clients don't even know what I look like. They don't even know what I look like. So it makes it so much more of a valuable company when we go to market and try to sell it too. 100%. You also don't want 250 people with your personal cell phone asking. Oh, oh man. Oh, no, man. Yeah. I, have like two, I have like two who have my personal cell phone and that's enough, man. That's, that's so, enough. Just to give you guys like just some quick, like a quick time lapse. When I started the agency, it was... Me, myself, and I, I learned all the roles. The first role I hired was a marketer so that I could sell more. And then immediately, once we got to like that number of 30, 35 clients, they all had my personal cell phone. They all had my email. I was running a super high paying job, a very yep. stressful one, a very, 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 very stressful one. That was like emails, texts, phone calls. I'm the direct point of contact. And so the moment we realized, dude, let me hire an account manager was an absolute game changer. I basically changed my phone number. Yeah. Really trained everyone to like now start to hit up the account manager. And that was such a huge win because um, that little jumping point from having no, being the account manager to now not being it. And then you train clients over like a three month period that you are no longer the person to contact. Yeah. That's a funny, that's huge, man. That's a funny, that's one, of, that's it's one of the hardest things to do is like when you hire that first CSM, it's one of the hardest things because you're no longer the point of contact for the client. So it's like, that's, that's one of the surest signs you're building a legit company is you're yeah. no longer having to do the customer service as the founder of the company. Yep. Uh, it's very hard to do. So building, building a CSM team has been, Really interesting journey. We have a, a three person CSM team. We we were up to five. Um, and that's yeah, man, that's that's been a cool process too, is building out that whole department. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom you'd want to share? Don't forget why you're really doing it and do the inner work on yourself. Like that's the thing that's gonna make you the most happy, the most fulfilled. I'm a big believer you should study philosophy and psychology side by side as you study business because it's going to help you get so much insight into yourself which thus is going to give you insight into business so don't forget why you're doing the thing you're doing otherwise you're just distracting you're not achieving you're distracting so don't forget the shit that's going on and uh yeah man i'd, I'd leave it at that 
I won't go. I won't. I won't go deeper on the, the <laughs> philosophy. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. like we were talking about this earlier, me and Matt are probably like the only multi seven figure agency owners in this SMMA YouTube space, like with legit yeah. teams. What we're saying is like, if you're looking for some step by step, click by click shit, you're gonna get wiped the fuck out anyways. Like you're gonna get so- yeah, because you're not becoming the person, man. Like at the end Who of the even- day, guys, figure it out. Just remember. Yeah. You're responsible for your reality. You need to find the right mentors, vet them, understand their track record. What have they built? What does it look like? Where's all the proof? Make a very, very clear, decisive decision that if you're going to continue investing your time watching these specific content creators or investing in mentors for knowledge exchange, that they are legit and you would, you could easily see yourself trading places with them. Yeah. So that, that's it. And there's going to get to a point after 30K or 50K, there's no more step-by-step shit. Once you know how to run Facebook ads, you know how to run Facebook ads. Once you understand principles of copywriting and offers and just the psychology, no one's going to teach you like the crazy more advanced stuff. Once you know how to design a landing page and buttons and, you know, automations and Zapier, you know it. Once you know like the basics, you know the basics. After that, it all comes down to how savage are you? of an entrepreneur to solve way bigger problems in your market, differentiate mm-hmm. differentiate yourself in the market and become a unicorn agency in your market that demands high seven figure ret- uh, revenues and profits. Yeah. So you can, you can be that guy. There, there's one last thing I, I couldn't agree more. And so Richard Barton, one of the only men alive to have ever founded multiple billion dollar companies He had an interview that I will never forget because one of his companies is a company called Zillow. And Zillow is the pinnacle of our space. So when Richard Barton talks, I listen, right? Because you don't beat your competitors by disregarding them. You you beat them by understanding them. So Richard Barton said something in an interview that will always stick with me. He said, there are only two things I look for when starting a company or when investing in a company because he's also a venture capitalist. There's only two things, the size of the market and the quality of the team. Size of the market, quality of the team. If you want to go to eight figures, multi-eight figures past that, like what Stevie's trying to do in his agency, you need a big market. You need an amazing team. Everything else will fall into place. But if you get those two right, you can get a ton of other shit wrong and you can still make millions, if not tens of millions, because you got those two things right. Pick the right industry. Build an amazing team. Build an amazing team. Do it. That's it. And, the, and in what I like to say in our agency is the entire culture is designed around the innovation of the product. If I can give you guys a big tip on where we're at now and how we just, without a doubt, just keep trailblazing the road, the way is the entire company's culture is designed and focused on the product and the results that the product gets and the success of the clients. It's not how much revenue digital ops gets. It's not how many clients we get. None of that is even really even talked about. The main things that are celebrated, cheered, discussed thoroughly in, in data in every department every single day is, is our product getting better? All the client reviews, all the client satisfaction and how we're marching forward to just continuing to innovate on what we've designed so far. As always, like, subscribe, drop comments on like topics that you want us uh, to discuss, you know, Makes it yeah, easy. All right, guys. All right, Matt. Peace.